Take one more big inhale. Now, as you're ready, exhale and rotate. You're gonna to turn to the side and just wake up that back, breathe in. Two more. And one more. Inhale, open up your arms. Exhale, go the other way. Hello, everybody. We're gonna rotate over the side, breathe in. Breathe in. And then when you come back, open up your arms and you're welcome to put your feet any way you want. I'm just sitting cross-legged. Yes, you can put them out. Arm up and over. Now we're waking up the body here so you can move. You can reach through your fingers, you can rotate, and let your breath come in through your nose and expand the ribs. Feel your back, feel your shoulder. Everything should feel just super good, super opening. Take another inhale. Exhale, go up and over. Rotate the feet like down. Rotate up. Breathe in. Let it feel good, let it feel opening. Let some more breath come in than it has been for the beginning of your day. Just breathing fuller, opening up the joints. Now take an inhale and come up. And this time we are gonna stretch our legs out. Now the modification would be to sit on something if you'd like. So you're gonna open up your arms and rotate so that your hand goes towards your opposite foot. So we'll open and then we'll reach for the opposite foot. This is a saw and at first because the inner thighs and the hamstrings might need a little bit of easing into, just back off the intensity. And as you feel like your hamstrings are warming up, you can go a little deeper, breathe in, turn, breathe in, keep going, rotate, and one more each, reach, there you go. This will feel good on your knees. And reach. Now, if you want to take it out a little bit wider, you can. Go up and over and hold. So we're just starting with a little stretching, a little mobility. Enjoy. And notice the posture might change as you're warming up. Take that inhale. Good, and up and over. And here we go. Enjoy. Good. Breathe. Breathe. Five. Four. Three. Two. And then just to make it even, so sometimes when you do one side and the other, it's nice to go right down the middle. So go right down the middle. Breathe. and then gently come back up. Grab a sip if you'd like, and then meet me back here. And I'm gonna take this off. We're gonna do a little legs next. So you can lie on your back. We'll do a little bit of legs. So we're gonna lie on the back. Let's use our abdominals to roll down. Let your feet on the floor. Take an inhale. Now exhale, curl your spine up, going up, hips are level, and then rolling down. And try to feel your lower back, each part of your lower back getting attention, one vertebra at a time. Your shoulders are resting onto the mat. You're linking your breath with your movement. So you're gonna feel the back of your legs, you're gonna feel the glutes, See if you can feel the four corners of your feet, the inner heel, the outer heel, the mound of the big toe, and the pinky mound. Lower back touches the floor before you peel it up one vertebra at a time. We're gonna add on a little bit more to these legs. So once you're up and your hips are level, you can take 10 pulses in that neutral position where your knees are over your heels. 
The pulses are about three inches or so. Now the knees can touch. This is called internal rotation and do 10 more pulses here, about three inches. Breathe in and out. And now we're gonna take the knees a little wider than the ankles and do 10 little pulses here. You should feel this in your glutes and hamstrings. Relax your jaw. And now let the knees go over your heels again and roll your spine down. Walk your hands towards your feet or your ankles and stretch out your hamstrings. This is called happy baby. I like a little rock with this one. Five, four, three, two, and one. Now we're gonna take the feet back on the floor, curl your spine up. And if the two-footed bridge is more your cup of tea, you can stay here. If you would like to add on a leg pull series, you can keep your hips in the air, but your right leg can point and flex down. Keep your hips in the air the whole time and level. And remember the modification would be to hold a two-footed bridge. If you're doing the leg pull, make it long and full and stretching through the back of that leg, pointing and flexing as big as you can, working that ankle, relaxing the shoulders. I've got us at nine here. And 10, let that foot back down and realign your hips. We're gonna lift up the other leg. There's a long knee if you can. Now, if the knee just won't lengthen, that hamstring's probably tight, so just Bend it as much as you need to, but otherwise, as your hamstring warms up, you're gonna to try to keep that knee long. Point and flex, as if you're articulating through your foot. Six, and flex, feel a hamstring stretch. Seven, breathe in and out. Eight, nine, beautiful. Breathe in, exhale, 10, and let the foot down, inhale. Roll your spine down again, one vertebra at a time. This time, take your right ankle to your left thigh, reach your hands through the window of your legs, clasp your fingers, and add a little, I like to add a little rock. You can also add some ankle mobility. Breathe in fully. And notice how good that feels on the hips and the back. And then let's take the other side, ankle to thigh, reach your hand through the windows of your leg, interlace the fingers, and if you'd like to rock, you can do that. And move your toes and your ankles. Breathe in fully. Breathing, inhale. Both legs hug in, either hold on to your shins or hold on to the underside of your thighs. If your knees don't like it when you hold on to your shins, just hug on to the underside of the thighs. Take an inhale, and on your exhale, we're gonna turn to the side, and the first offering is that you're up on your forearm, your legs are long, and you're gonna take the top leg and draw circles while pointing the toes. Go up, keep lifting up through your ribs, if you need a modification, you would lie on your arm and let your neck be in neutral closer to the floor. It is harder to be lifted like this. Breathe in and out. Now we're gonna pull those toes back on the top foot and we're gonna do backward circle. Try to keep your ribs lifted. It's easy to drop towards the floor, but we're gonna stay lifted. And six and seven, protecting your wrist. Eight, so nothing's harsh on my hands, nine, now, this arm does become our pillow. This leg does come ahead in a passive rest. It's not helping. Take the top, uh, excuse me, take the bottom leg and draw circles. Breathe in and out. Keep pulling your waist in. And six, go high. Seven with that circle. Eight without any neck tension. Nine. Now go the other way. We're gonna pull our toes back, especially the pinky toe. All the toes get pulled back. Four five, and six, seven, eight, and nine. Now we're gonna lie on the belly, take your arms underneath your head or your cheek like a pillow, lift up the legs and tap the feet together 20 times. 
to work the hamstrings and work the glutes. Take an inhale, and on your exhale, go to the other side. The first step was propping yourself up on your forearm, lift up through the ribs, point your toes, draw circles, breathe in. Good. And three, check your wrists, they're uh, happy. You're not pushing any extra pressure on them. Good, check your neck, it's happy. Lift up through your ribs. And we're gonna pull those toes back. Here we go, backwards. And keep lifting up through your ribs. It's easy to sag, but we're gonna work the waist by staying upright. Good, and seven. Breathe in, now eight, nine. Now let that foot down. This arm is gonna be your pillow. This leg's gonna be forward and passive. Now this bottom leg is gonna point and do circles for 10. Try to lift up pretty high. We're not used to working the inner thighs this way, so it may feel novel than daily task, but we're gonna strengthen them here. It's great for balance. Now pull your toes back. This is also working the ankle and the foot. Your bottom knee is long. Your jaw is soft. And six. And seven. Good. And eight. And nine. Now roll on your belly and we're gonna do those lifted up thighs. We're gonna tap your toes 20 times while you rest your neck, 20 taps while your knees are off the floor, 10 more. And then we're gonna to go to the other side. Now anytime you need a child's pose, you can do that. And then we'll go to the other side. We're gonna take a little leg series here. Let your elbow be underneath your shoulder, prop yourself up. Take the front leg and point forward and flex back. Point forward and flex back. Point forward and flex back. Good, you're trying to stay lifted through the ribs. Five, work in the hip. Six, good, stable in the upper body. Seven, it's not rocking. Eight, your leg's moving but your body's not. Nine, and 10, now this one is hot potato, so tap your toe forward in front of your leg and behind. Tap it front, toes down the whole time on that top leg. Tap, tap, four, four, five. Stay lifted in your waist. Six, six, seven, seven, eight. Wrist are happy, nine, nine, 10, 10. Now this leg that was working goes ahead the bottom arm is your pillow. Take your bottom leg and point forward, flex back. Point forward, flex back. Breathe in, neck soft. The hand here, my hand here is reminding my belly to pull in a little bit, especially when my legs behind me, so that I don't get lordotic or too low back sway. Got some ab tone right here below my ribs. Nine. Now, this is gonna be tap front, lift up, tap back. And it's like you're jumping over a potato, hot potato. You barely tap the floor and up. And lift and lift, long knee on the bottom. Top leg is soft, let's do five more. Jaw is soft, go higher than you think you can. And three, three, two, two, one, one. Now, lying on the back, we're gonna do a vertical kick. Imagine that you are at the swimming pool, swimming laps, vertically, kick your legs, knees off the floor, 20 reps, inhale, and on your exhale, we're gonna to go to the other side. Remember, anytime you need two child's pose between those, you can, good. Your elbow helps prop you up. Take your top toes, point forward, flex back. Point forward, flex back. Imagine that there is a cupcake underneath your ribs and you can't squish the cupcake. You wanna stay lifted, a healthy cupcake. Four and point five and six. How stable can you keep your upper body? Seven, eight, and nine, 
10. Now, this top leg, the same one, is going to tap toe front, tap toe back. It's like you barely tap the floor. Just tapping to see if it's hot water. And four, four, that's how to get your glute medius, your hip. Five, five, build bone density. Six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. Now this arm becomes a pillow. This leg goes in front in a stretch, so you can rest here. The bottom leg is going to point and flex point and flex point and flex. Keep that bottom knee long. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now imagine that you're jumping over an acorn squash. You're lifting up and over that acorn squash. Neck is soft. Jaw is soft. Tap toe front, tap toe back. Six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten, and then lie on your belly, arms underneath your cheek or your forehead. Lift up both legs and add a quick flutter kick while relaxing your neck. Take 20 here. Five more. Inhale, and then exhale, you're going to push back, child's pose. Now, if you would like to put your toes under, you can, and rest. Five, four, three, two, and one. Gorgeous. Let's take a stretch for some of those leg muscles we worked. Let your feet soles go together. Let your knees be wide like a butterfly, and then if your body will allow, hinge forward. Maybe your forearms will rest on your calves or your legs. Rest here, relax your neck. Stretching out those pectineus muscles, the short inner thigh muscles. Take another inhale and come up. We're going to stretch the long in your thighs. Take an inhale. Exhale. Now your hands can be on your legs or on the floor. And just relax. Relax your neck. Full inhales, full exhales. Come back up. This hip opener is like crisscross applesauce. The foot could be on where your thigh meets your calf. Take an inhale and then as you exhale, just come forward and relax your hip. Rest your neck. Inhale and come up. Cross your feet the other way. We're just touching those muscles. The ankles could be on the floor or one foot could be up where the thigh meets the uh, calf. Breathe in and exhale forward. Just touch the muscles. I like to even rock a little right and left sometimes, so if that helps you relax, go for it. Breathe in. And then when you're ready, inhale and come back up. Beautiful job on that leg series. Let's grab a sip of water and meet on the mat for some planks. Good job. All right, when you're ready, place your elbows down underneath your shoulders and either be on your knees to modify or on your toes. We'll take a forearm plank here for 15. Feel your belly pull up, feel your forearms strong, feel your ear in line with your shoulder from the side view. 
And we'll take five more counts here. Four, three, two, and one. And then we're gonna take a side plank and we're gonna put our feet on the floor and lift up. Now, hold for 15, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Lower down that hip. Let's go to the other side. We're gonna do 15. Uh, the stability of a side plank, this, this opportunity when you're still lets you make sure all the cues are good. Our, our knees are long, our hips are lifted, our ribs are in line with the pelvis, our shoulder blade is down the back, we're breathing calmly. So we're establishing stability before we add any dynamic or mobile mobility. Take an inhale and exhale, come back down. That went great, so now we're gonna add on. Let's go to our front plank. Now while you're in a front plank, we're gonna do one I call a rock and roll. Lift up your knees, and this is your option to stay plank. If you care to add a little rotation, drop your right hip a little, then your left hip just a little. Just a tiny little rotation, like you're listening to music and just tapping your hip down to the beat, just a little inch rotation. And four, three, two, one. Really good. Now we're gonna turn to the side. This is side plank. Your hand can come by your temple. Let's, you can even fold your knuckles here so that your wrist is say, even safer. Rotate your torso, but not your hips. Rotate your torso, but not your hips. And exhale. Notice your hips stay square forward, but your torso moves. Four, breathe in. Five, six, seven, eight. Jaw is soft. Nine, and whoop, ten. Now lower your hip, and we're going to go to the other side. So there's a controlled cadence here, and of course you, your um, main factor is that your form is good. Your quality is more important than your quantity. Fingers here, come up. Once you feel stable, the torso rotates. The hips stay square. The torso rotates. I've got my wrist really neutral. <sighs> Breathe in. I'm feeling the belly pull in <sighs> as I rotate. Six. Hips are still lifted. Seven, no jaw tension. Eight, nine, just do the best you can. Wonderful. 10, lower the hip down. Wonderful job. Let's add on another forearm plank. And we'll add on a possibility here of pushing forward and then dropping back through your heels pushing forward and dropping back to your heels. Now, of course, if this bothers your feet, don't do that. You can also put your shins on a roller if you need to give the feet a little breather. Otherwise, five more, four, three, two, one. Now, lower, good job. We're gonna add a side plank with some possibilities. Listen to your body. The first possibility, is the arm stretches and you pull this three times. One, two, now maybe you'll still do that or if you'd like to add your knee pulling in three, two, one, maybe you'll put them together. Three, two, one. Now lower your hip. We're gonna go to the other side. As always, if you wanna stick with one of those previous layers, you can. So it could be you do a side plank it could be you pull your elbow three, two, one, and then you do your knee. Three, two, one, and then maybe you put them together or you stick with one of the prior levels. Two, and now lower your hip. Wonderful job. We're gonna do a side stretch after all that. Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Oh, these rotations feel so good on the shoulders and the back. Take that inhale, go up 
head over, breathe in, breathe in, opening up, five, four, three, two, and one. And then let's grab a sip and meet back here, good job. This next series is for abdominals. Listen to your body. There's always a backup plan of doing bridges too if you prefer, or a plank. So the first one is that you roll back, and that's a partial roll up when you come up. That would be a modification if your neck doesn't like this. If you care to go down lower, and you wanna reach your arms overhead, you can come up and over your legs. Now this is the roll up. Your legs are glued. So if you are not able to come up and your legs are kicking and you're having to throw your arms forward, you might prefer just to do a modification, the partial roll down, or you might prefer just to do some bridges, which are always good. Inhale. On this next one, if you would like, you can add on what's called neck pull and Pilates. Your Fingertips are by your temples. You'll hinge and then you'll flex. Then you inhale and you exhale, come up and over. You sink with your spine. You hinge, you flex. Good, breathe in. Exhale, up and over. Lift up your spine, hinge and flex. Good, we're gonna do one more of these. Come up, go over, lift your spine, hinge, flex. Now, once you're down, take a full body stretch, wonderful. The next move is a crisscross. So your feet would be on the floor for a moment, hands behind your head, and rotate. Now, exhale as you rotate, and you extend one leg out, a modification, if this doesn't serve you, is to let the Pilates ring or a towel come behind your head like a hammock and help support your neck. All right, let's take four more. Three, two, one. Now, left leg down, right leg up. This is also abdominals, but it's a nice way to keep the neck out of it. So this would always be another good modification you could do if one of the other abdominal exercises didn't serve you. Four, so the bigger the circle, the harder it is to maintain stability in your shoulder blades and your ribs, and that's our goal. Breathe in. Now we're gonna take it the other way. I have a soft a point, an active foot pointing. The other leg is actively pouring down to the ground, so it's not lifting up with my other leg. Shoulders are down on the mat, but I don't have any tension in the jaw. Feel your abs keeping your ribs connected. Inhale. Now on this last one, we're gonna hold that leg in the air and the hands can go on the underside. I'm gonna add five point flexes for those feet. Inhale, and then you'll just pull the toes back and hold. Five, four, good, three, two. All right, that went well. Let's take the other side. Right leg pours down, left leg up. Draw circles. Inhale. Exhale. The bigger the circle, the harder it is. So the challenge is to keep the shoulder blades even on the floor and keep the ribs even on the floor. Jaw soft. Now we're taking it the other way. Keep the foot actively pointing, but not so much that you feel like you're gonna get a foot cramp or a calf cramp. Your other leg is pouring down to the ground. Shoulder blades are flat on the mat. Six, good. Seven, knee is long. Eight, there shouldn't be any clicking. If there's clicking, decrease the range of motion. Now when this leg's in the air, you're gonna hold on to the underside, point, and flex the feet five times, like you're articulating through your foot. Now leave the toes pulling back. Hold, 
five, four, three, two, and corkscrew. Now this is more advanced, but the neck is out of it. So the legs are up, the hands are down like a frame. Keep your legs glued, and we're gonna go into a circle, but then when you get to 12 o'clock or vertical, go the other way. Now inhale, and exhale, pull the belly in. Officially, this exercise has a component at the top, a hip lift, for example, here. And for the masses, I'll show just this corkscrew to keep it nice and controlled. In reality, the corkscrew goes up and over and then down the back. So if you're used to that advance and you can uh, keep this off your neck, you're only going to your shoulder blades, you're welcome to do that. I'm going to continue to show the one that has a high success for the masses. And three, good. And two, good guys, your ribs are down, that looks great. One more, breathe in. Now we're gonna take a hip opener, let the right ankle go to the left thigh, hands reach behind and just relax that body. Relax your hips. Relax your back, breathe in. Notice how good it feels to let out of tension, to let go of any uh, dense energy, tension or stress. Let's take the other side, reach that left ankle to the right thigh, your hands go through the window and relax with a little rock, a little right and left movement, breathe in. Let your exhales release any tension. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. One more stretch here. Hands to the middle of your knees. You're reaching for your feet or your ankles and let the knees be wide. Supta Baddha Konasana is supine bound angle. It's like a little butterfly. Good. Five, four. Terrific job. You did great. If you care for a sip, Grab a sip and then meet me on the floor for some swans. You might notice we're doing blocks or sections of the exercises. So you'll know, you'll work certain areas of the muscle and then we'll let those areas rest. So to begin, start with your belly down, your legs long, and this is a great First posture and a great modification called Sphinx. So when you're down, your belly is lifted up, your shoulders are down the back, and you can have your hands down, but you don't have any tension in the fingers or wrist. Breathe in and notice how this one feels. This is just a great first one or modification. This can also be done on the foam roller. If you care to add on, you can press your hands into the floor and you can lift up a little bit higher. Beautiful. Check your neck. I like to even move my head sometimes just to make sure the neck isn't congested. Breathe, hold. This can be done on a foam roller or this can be done on the floor. Breathe. Lower down, we're gonna do that two more times. So we're gonna do that inhale, either come up to sphinx or come up to your hands. Find what works for you. Our main goal is the upper back gets extension. Breathe in. Exhale, lower. We're gonna do this one more time. Get ready, inhale, come up. If you care to take a child's pose here, you can. We're gonna just rest the back for a moment. Notice how you feel. And then come back down to your belly. Now with your belly, we're gonna take the hands beside the hips, palms low, uh, excuse me, palms face the floor. Lift up your back. At first, your toes can be down and you're lifting up your back with your breathing and your back muscles. If you can add on the toes floating off the floor, you can add that extra layer. Hold this high as you can. 
without any neck tension. 10, take another inhale. Looks great, we're gonna do that again. So we'll just rest for a moment. You can even windshield wipe your knees here. Now we're gonna do that again. Lift up your torso, lift up your hands, and maybe you'll even lift up your toes. Three. Really good. If you care to add on, place your hands on your lumbar spine. You can interlace them or just rest one on the other. I like to interlace them and push the palms together, but see what works for your wrist and your shoulders. Come up. Really good, guys. 10. Inhale. And exhale, come back to a child's pose. Rest. Knees can be together on this one, arms in front. If you'd like to add on, bend the elbows and pat yourself on the back for a bit of a tricep stretch. And let's continue down to the floor for our swan series. The right arm can reach for the right foot. Maybe the left hand can reach for the left foot. Take an inhale and then push into your hands. Lift up, breathe. Notice how the breath goes to your upper back and your chest, the diaphragm, and it actually facilitates your extension. Your wrist should feel solid, not torqued. Your neck should be in line with the torso, the thoracic spine, and not cranking way up with any congestion or tension. Breathe in this bow pose. Exhale, relax. You can just rest your cheek to the side if you'd like. We're gonna do that again because it feels so good and it's such a great front side stretch. Press your feet to the, place your hands into the feet and come up. Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Inhale, and exhale. Beautiful, let's take a child's pose. Just to mix things up, let the knees be wide. Let your belly drop in the middle and rest. Five, four, three, two, inhale, and then exhale. Great job. Let's take a sip and meet back here. Good job, guys. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We're going to hit a little bit of our forearm planks now. So let's go down to the forearm plank, elbows underneath the shoulders, extend the legs back. And this one is called isometric. So you're going to be in your normal plank. And from the outside, nothing changes. But on the inside, pull your elbows towards your feet and your feet towards your elbows. There's an isometric contraction, meaning the muscle length doesn't change. You should feel a little bit like 10 or 15% of your abdominals just went up in challenge. So there's more work going on here. Five, four, three, two, really good. Lower down. Now on this side plank, the option is to do a normal side plank, just like this, or to do a tree pose. So please choose what you would like. Hold for 10 once you get there. Nine, eight, good. Seven, beautiful. Six, five, four, three, two. Lower your hip and go to the other side. And the option is either a tree which I didn't show, that's plank, <laughs> or a chore plank with a tree. 10, you get to choose. Nine, eight, good, seven, six, five, four, three, two, lower the hip, go to the other side, forearm plank. Now, this possibility 
It's small, but you point your right toes off the floor to the wall behind you, and then you point your left toes, and you can do a normal plank, or you can do this little toe lift. Take six more, five, notice I'm not lifting the hips, four, three, two, one. And now release your hip. This one is hand to the thigh, either a plank, or if you'd like to add on, go up and over, and up and over. Breathe in, think of graceful movements through the fingers even. Think of strong and flexibility, strong and flexible. Six, as you lift the hips, you feel your abs working, you feel your hips working. Eight, nine, 10, beautiful. Let's go to the other side. Now you can either hold a normal side plank or place your hand on your thigh and go up and over. Breathe in, your hips do lift with this arm movement, stretching. I like the image of catching a cloud or letting your fingers go up to the sky, painting a rainbow. Strong bottom arm, continuous breathing. Exhale. Wonderful job. Let the hips down. Take a seated position that serves you. We'll take a stretch for all that. Up and around. One of my favorite stretches, thoracic rotation. 10. Upper back is our focus. Take an inhale. And then exhale to go the other way. Upper back focus. Take an inhale and face front. Let's grab a sip and meet on the floor for some stretches. So grab a sip. I'm hoping you're getting eight to 12 ounces uh, in the class. Make sure that you have enough mat behind you that you can roll down and be supported. Take an inhale. Inhale, and as you're ready, exhale, roll down, making sure you have enough mat behind you. Now, once you get down, reach the arms long, reach the legs long, and shift through your waist so that even though your legs are on the floor, one leg gets longer than the other by shifting through the waist, the QL muscle, the low back muscle, one arm reaches longer than the other. It's almost like you're climbing a ladder on the floor. Breathe in. Now on your exhale, take the right leg across your body. This is called a knee down twist. Your left hand can rest on that thigh. Your right arm can take three circles as if you're drawing a circle in the sand at the beach on a perfectly warm day. You can let that hand Stay out like the letter T or Y. Feel that shoulder and chest open. Your gaze is towards that hand, but you can close the eyes to bring your focus inside. Relax your chest and shoulder. Relax your hip. Relax your low back and your upper back. Breathe in fully through your nose and let your exhale release any tension in the body and any tension in the mind. This is your time. Let all your tension melt away. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, realign the spine, the right leg goes long. The left knee comes across the body and the right hand can rest on that thigh. The left arm can take about three circles as if your fingers are drawing a circle in the sand making sure that every part of this range of motion feels appropriate for you. If there's any pain, decrease that range. Once your left arm's out like a T, 
For a while, you can take your gaze that way, but now you can let your eyes close, relax your left shoulder, relax your upper back, feel your low back letting go, feel your hip relaxing, feel your whole body letting go. Every exhale is a great chance to relax and drop deeper into a state of release. Take another inhale. And as you're ready, come back and then realign your spine and take your right ankle to your left thigh. And if you can add on, reach your hands through the window. You might even like to rock your hips here. If you have any discomfort in the neck when you're doing this pose, you can put a pillow underneath your head. Breathe in. Let go of any tension with your exhales. Breathing in your nose, breathing out of your nose. Take another inhale, and as you exhale, take your other ankle to thigh, reach your hands through. Rocking your hips if you'd like. how every exhale is letting go of even more tension. Now as you're ready, we're going to let the feet go a little wider than your hips. Drop the inner right knee down, and if you'd like to add on, pick up your left ankle and let it rest on the thigh like a paperweight. Your arms go up, breathe in fully. Breathe in. Let everything else go. Feel the low back lengthen. Feel the breath expand the rib cage. Take another inhale. And as you're ready, let the feet go wide again, wider than your hips. Let the inner left knee drop. And if you care to add on, pick up your right ankle and rest it on that thigh. Breathe in. Just follow the breath and follow the release of the tension in the body. Melt away, melt away. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, return to your back and place your right leg in the air. And you can use a Dynaband around your foot or a Pilates ring, or you can just hold on to the back of your leg and just add some point and flexes if you can, some ankle rolls. The other leg is pouring down to the ground. I like to think of it as melting to the floor. And if you'd like to keep it into a slightly more intense stretch, pull those toes back, breathe in. Relax your neck, relax your jaw, relax your mind. The leg that's in the air can cross the midline a little bit for that hamstring. The outer hamstring feels so good here. Now 
That same leg you can take out to the side a little bit or maybe a lot. Just find a good place for you. Take another inhale and then switch which legs in the air. Your left leg can go up, your right leg can go down. Pour the right leg down. Now the leg that's in the air, you can point and flex that ankle. You can move in circles with your ankle. You can spread the toes. Release any tension from the feet. You can keep the toes pulled back if you like that extra stretch. And you might like to take that leg across the body just a little. Breathe in through your nose and expand your belly, your diaphragm. We know that helps tap into the parasympathetic system where rebuilding of the muscle is rebuilding of the body. That leg could go out to the side a little bit. Letting your mind relax and letting it just enjoy the sanctuary of this stretching routine. Take an inhale. And as you're ready, you can put your feet in your hands, happy baby, and just do a little bit of a rock. Your feet can come together and your knees open like a little butterfly. This is another place you might like to rock. And then take a moment to stretch the body long. This is called Shavasana where you're letting your mind go and your natural vibration will rise when you suspend thought. So if any thoughts occur, just let them be like clouds where they just drift on by. You're not attaching any judgment or meaning to them. But focus on the breath coming in and cleansing and nourishing every cell of your being. And with every exhale, you're letting go of the past or the future and you're just refilling your cup. Breathe in and feel the breath as nourishment to every cell of your body. Exhale, let go of anything troubling. Breathe in nourishment to your cells. We'll do that two more times, feeling love being sent to all your cells. One more. Now, as you're ready, you can wiggle the fingers and the toes and come up to a seated position that serves you, Sukhasana, and take a moment to let one hand come to the heart and then the other. Breathe in the energy of love to all of your cells, sending them nourishment and care. Exhale, let go of anything heavy or tense. Breathe in nourishment and love to your cells. And exhale, let go of everything else. Inhale, breathe in the energy of nourishment and rejuvenation. And exhale, let go of everything else. Today, I intend to stay closely connected to the natural wellness point of peace. Anytime I start to notice that I fall away from that place, I know I can take a few breaths nourish my cells and send them to the place of happiness where they know they belong with so much appreciation thank you guys so much have a beautiful day thank you so much wonderful guys wonderful take care <laughs>